Hi, everyone. It's Neil Brennan. This is Blocks Podcast. My guest today is, uh, I've known him 20, 20, almost 20. Uh, we did a hit movie together called The Goods. And then pretty much the Backstreet Boys came along and revolutionized music as a whole. Hello. In 2008, he, at the same time he was filming another movie called The Hangover, it did significantly better. <laughs> I just wish your friends were as mature as you. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Paging doctor. Um, from The Daily Show. Those are my pants. From The Office. So look out, Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> And he has his own podcast called Snafu with Ed Helms. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ed Helms. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I feel like we've known each other. Let's see. I just, Over 20. I, I just turned 50. Uh-huh. So Can't relate. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure I, that we knew each other, but we were, but I, I was sort of in the, the Boston Comedy Club. Yes. Um, you emceed yeah. the Monday night. Yeah, I did. I, I emceed the Monday nights for a couple of years, and and was just like there all the yeah. time. We, and, you know what's interesting about you and I? S vaguely similar faces. Is that right? I believe so. I believe <laughs> I've always thought we have vaguely similar faces. If you just look in your single, I'll look in mine. I think we have vaguely right. similar faces. Vaguely, vaguely, like something. There's something shape wise about our faces. Anyhow, so yes, I knew about you. Uh, I remember when you got hired at The Daily Show. I remember hearing yeah. that, so I don't know what year that was. That was 2002, so yeah. that was 20. I think we were doing Chappelle's show, and I heard that they hired Ed Helms, and, yeah. and then I was, and then people were like, oh yeah, you probably met him at the bus. Yeah, but then we- Then we, we worked dove together. in hard. Just <laughs> got and and brought the heat. We Ed, Funny movie, The Goods, didn't do well for a number of reasons, but but- I stand Neither by the of comedy. those reasons are you or me. <laughs> <laughs> I no, stand I, by the I comedy. Do too. Yeah. I'm proud of that I, movie. Yeah, yeah, that was a um, ton of fun. Yeah, um, and then you, but uh, and I kind of knew that the Hangover was going to crush. Did the, you? That know? was a little bit later. It was. Right? Wasn't well, it? No, I think it was. We didn't come out to. We came out the same year. They both came out summer 2009. We had shot the goods in 2007. Oh, and it was so good right, they right, right. held it for a year they and a half. <laughs> so when that's then you right. shot. The Hangover, which I'd read and was like, this is going to crush. And yeah. I always respected Todd Phillips for having the Todd's a really good caster. Yeah. You were all underdogs at that point. Mm, yeah. Like it wasn't like star, 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 which made the movie great. But like he was really good at that. Yeah. He, he, he got a good, built some good chemistry there. I agree. Based on, I mean, not like like it just. I I think he just has a sense of like a four shot who will look good and what or what'll feel right or right? something. Right. Yeah. And and the the you're right. The script was so good. Yeah. It was just like oh, this will work. Yeah. And it was just like sort of putting the building blocks together, like the goods. Much Ladies like gentlemen, the please, goods. Please watch. Please, the if goods. you can find it. Please watch it. Right, everybody? And how, Snafu, you were saying, is... is yeah, uh, Snafu's a podcast I started because um, everybody has a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I just was feeling left out. And was kind it kind of, of that? What did, Was it a thing where you were like, I'm fucking do a podcast? No, well, it. I, so I, I definitely was just loving podcasts. Yeah. And I was listening to a ton, and I, I was like do I fit into this space somewhere? And I, I just, I didn't really want to do an interview show because I felt like there's a lot of great ones out there like this one. Mm -hmm. Um, but also I, it just wasn't organic for me. So it, it, I just started to like, think about what do I, what do I love? I'm a kind of a history nerd and snafu was just this idea that, that, uh, that emerged of history's greatest screw ups. Yeah. And the screw ups are so fun to look back on because yeah. usually like they're, they're far enough in the past that they're, you can have fun with them, but they can, but they can also be very, very bleak. Okay. Let's do some blocks. Diagnosed ADHD. How, how hacky is that? 
It, it just no, feels. I mean, it's, but I do it, have the benefit it, or of saying. When did you get diagnosed? Yeah. Okay. So this is <laughs> this is why I feel a little bit okay. legit because I actually uh -huh. got uh, justify this an official <laughs> diagnosis. But I I have to say, um, like I think a lot of people, I just had begun to suspect that m some of my the things I was struggling with in life um, might have this like overarching like rubric or organizing principle <laughs> and ADHD was was sounding like kind of an interesting possibility. Um, so I went to, uh, I, I had a neuropsychiatric evaluation and a, a very in-depth like- As an adult, full, fairly yeah, recently. this was fairly recently. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I received uh, an official diagnosis of of ADHD. What was and the what did they do? What it written obviously? Yes. Just okay. So it's a it was basically a full day of of uh, tests, and they're they're very kind of unusual tests because you sometimes you can kind of tell what they're testing, other times you can't. Um, but uh, but it was everything from literally like and you can shade your answers like if you want to have something you can kind of be like oh, i can't yeah, right i'm powerless <laughs> yeah exactly um no it is funny you because because you're like is the test designed to pick up on people who I are know. trying to game that, I the know. test and, I know. And, and like trying to get it in a yep. diagnosis and you but don't I, know i actually brought as much kind of like intellectual honesty as i could to the process because i just i really wanted some some clarity and and hopefully help um down the road but the questions are like it's everything from these weird math problems and like spatial pro like ge memory ge geometry yeah Th yep. and then there's and then there's ones where they tell you like a little story and then ask you questions uh -huh. about it and then they come back to that an hour later ask you more questions about it after some other testing um there's some so some of it's visual. There's weird things like on an iPad where you're like tapping test results to uh -huh. test like your, I guess your eye movement uh -huh. and things. There's one where uh, that I felt was clearly sort of like uh, like autism, like social cue testing, which uh -huh. was like you would. I think you either watch a video or listen to. Um, a recording of someone saying something and and then and then like multiple choice kind of select their disposition are are they angry are they curious are they you sort of like and and that's clearly like a social cue yes. testing and and a lot of it is with a test administrator who's there who's sitting there talking to you and then some of it was just like you know traditional test taking like timed act uh, yeah. things, but it was all day. And, uh, then they do the, all the sort of crunching number crunching and, uh, over a couple of weeks. And then you come back in and they talk you through all your results and they say, and then this is the, and this is what we've, if this is our evaluation and, uh, ADHD is, is present. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Is it, is it half? Ding, ding. <laughs> you yeah. win ADHD. And it, it was a, a crazy, that was a crazy moment, actually. Because you understood yourself better? This is why it surprised me. I kind of was expect. you know, you hear about people saying, oh, I got the diagnosis, whether it's, whether it's autism or Asperger's or ADHD. You know, people say like just getting the diagnosis was so reassuring because I suddenly had a a kind of pathway to understand this. Trevor Noah said that, and I yeah. okay, yeah, you, I I think that's a very common yeah. thing, and I actually even expected that because yeah. I expected the diagnosis, and I expected to feel that way. Um, I think there was a maybe a moment of that, but I actually felt, uh. I felt scared and sad because I didn't know. It's like, I think that there was like this fleeting reassurance, but then it was kind of like, okay, now the work begins. Like I really do have, there really is something going on here. And what I, is the work though? I mean, I, yeah. Well, for me it's, and I haven't, I've, 
started this process yet, but um, but it's well, you got ADD. What do you, the, you got ADHD. What do you expect? You cut you know yourself I mean? some slack. Yeah, I mean, helps. if no one, no one's expecting <laughs> you to. Um, yeah, I've been procrastinating. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, and and I, the short answer is I don't know, but I am diving in with this uh, neuropsychiatrist and hoping to find a lot of tools and coaching and uh, and sort of like coping mechanisms. What what are what's the downside? Because I can tell you the upside from from watching you uh watching you having directed you and watching you and other things you're very good at playing hectic you're an idiot you're a you god you're such a bad person yeah you're very good at playing you want you have adhd (laughs) like you have you like want (laughs) you need answers it's good for for the parts you've gotten and it's good for the performances of like I need. I I gotta find. I'm. I'm. I need this to be over. It has <laughs> Is worked. Is that the vibe I gave? You? Uh, it has worked. It <laughs> has no, I worked. I need this to be Just over. like you're. You're good. You were very good at being amped. <laughs> That's the beauty of my career choice for my particular condition. I think. Yeah. My whole life is episodic. My whole professional life is episodic, and it allows me to just hyper focus on a project, on a character on uh on an episode or on a film like everything is so yeah sort of tight and i can just like go all in which i always have loved yeah and uh and then i move on to the next thing which kind of addresses like my need for novelty and like constantly uh constantly changing my environment and uh my pursuits um I often reflect on how unbelievably lucky I am to have found this job and to have found this, like uh, to have had this, the success that I've had in this job that it's allowed me to stay in it as long as I have, because I really, there's so much, I used to joke about this. uh, Paul Giamatti had a, had a part in, um, in hangover Two. Where's Chow? Where is Chow? And we still laugh about this on set. Just, I, I, I'm so confused by the world. Like, I just don't understand how things work. There's so much that I am baffled by. Give me one example of a thing that you're like, oh my God. how does that, what is, how is that happening? God. Every, every, it, it used like I used to be toll boots. Yes, yeah, so like it used to, I used to be so much more preoccupied with this. I've, I've since kind of chilled out a bit. But, um, but I would just, I would be like, I would just dr- like drive by a gas station and suddenly just be like, how the fuck do they get all the gas in there? Where does it, how do they, sh- where do they ship yeah. it from? Where does it come? Like it comes out. And then out, when you get an answer, it, it it's still an not a good enough ocean, answer. And then yeah. somehow it's processed. It gets into uh, tankers and then trucks. And then it gets all the way to this gas station. And you'll in see Tulsa, the tanker Oklahoma. and you'll be like, that like, doesn't seem like enough. Right. It's like, it's such a complex task yeah. and I would be, or, or a complex uh, system. And I was like always overwhelmed by like the complexity of, of just the systems around me. Yep. And I and I think that that partly was due to like a very excited curiosity that I've always had and like wanting to know answers, but also um <laughs> kind of like fleeting uh like just a racing ADHD brain that doesn't sit on things and actually like do the work to figure it out or or learn about something. So like uh, that's just such a random example, but it also no. Speaks, that's a, but it, it's clear. It, it's so it's everything. It would be like yeah. the Supreme Court. How the fuck does that work? Yeah. Like how does that? It's so comp. Who runs that? Yeah. Who runs all the clerks and the yeah. <laughs> opinions and like yeah. get making sure the opinions get in on time and like the schedule for the court? Yeah. What a, a like mind blowing system. I mean, I'm just and then and so then I think even at a small scale, my brother is a school teacher. And I'm just like, how can he do that? How does that, like, like it's so much, and this is, again, is part of, I think, the ADHD brain, like, has so much trouble contemplating complexity or, like, grasping complex tasks. Yeah. Like, this, it's always been a, 
a confusing thing for me. Like, like go the idea of going to a classroom every day, teaching every day, also having like tons of paperwork, tons of like. Did you have a hard time adjusting to the Daily Show being on a scripted like? the day at a daily show at the daily show of like you're gonna do a a chat yeah what's the premise memorization right like were the, did you have a hard time memorizing scenes or did you have a did you or, no you know I, what i mean I, like yes. how, why were you able to get that yes because, because you liked it because i loved it yeah and it's all i wanted to do yeah and i had a very sort of unearned confidence in that space that, that was born out of just like, this is what I'm meant to do. I I, I believed Get that. out of my way. For some reason <laughs> I had, yeah. I just had a, this, like I remember at the Boston Comedy Club one night, I went downstairs to the Bag It In to like get some change for, to to do the door, you know, like to, Money. to just have yeah. some cash for the door. And I, and I was running up the back steps know them from, well. the, the, from the bag and into the to the comedy club upstairs, and it it was it's gr- it's like empirically a disgusting environment. Like mm-hmm. it stinks. Mm-hmm. It smelled like you could smoke then in bars, and it was there was everything smelled like spilled beer and liquor and smoke, and mixed with cleaning products. Mm-hmm. And then also just like New York City mildew, gross like, rot. Mm-hmm. That is like by the, the way, the staircase to my mind was one of the cleaner parts of it. <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? Like yes. that was like a rest. Yeah. That was like yeah. the the DMZ. That was like exactly. the DMZ. Like there was it wasn't <laughs> any of the stuff you're describing. <laughs> But I'm coming up that staircase and I'm like kind of looking around me like this is foul. This is gross. Uh-huh. But also. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Like, yeah. I love that I'm here. Yep. I love that I'm going to go up into this club and get on stage in a few minutes. I'm so psyched. I'm terrified as I always was. Like was a nervous. weird destiny or something? Yeah, or just like. But that's because that's just, not just, even just, like a good place to be. I'm saying if you're on the daily, when you audition for the daily show or you audition for, for the hangar, are you? Were you a good auditioner? Were you nervous? Uh, I was. I was a very good auditioner. Um, in, I, partly because I actually, um, I did voiceovers for so long. Mm. And when you do voiceovers, you just go to thousands of auditions Uh. and I, and I just became this like killer at audition at just, just the skill of auditioning, which is totally separate from the skill of comedy or the skill of acting. They're, they're like auditioning is its own skill set. And I just became like. It's like being good at a standing long jump. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to like a track meet. Yeah. You're just like, I can do it right now. Yeah. Or it's like being good at putting on the, your uniform. It's like kind of unrelated. Like, yeah. Then then you go and do the thing well. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Yeah. But if you can put your uniform on right, mm-hmm. <laughs> then like, I mean, that's not a good. But no, metaphor, but so but. you audition well for your audition for The Daily Show. You had to do a chat on yeah. the set. You know, John's watching somewhere. Well, the first round of the audition was um, was a cattle call at, ah. at, at a casting agency that I'd been to hundreds of times. Ah. So I knew the casting agent. I knew uh, the the space. I knew everyone else, uh, not everyone else, but most other people auditioning. There were, and it was huge. It was a big cattle call. It was like all over town, tons of people. But I also was a student of The Daily Show at that time. Like I'd been watching it every night and studying it and like, you know, pra- kind of like practicing the the um, that particular like sort of yeah. news cadence, which yep. is very unique to news. Yeah. And myself with a hidden camera underneath my ball set. People sort of take for granted, oh, they're just talking. Well, it's actually a very specific way of talking. And yeah. th- this kind of dedication and focus like didn't exist anywhere else in my life. <laughs> anywhere yeah. else. Like I could not Did your parents I or couldn't anyone pay my tax. Like, I like my taxes were late every year. I couldn't yeah. I just I couldn't deal with like a lot of basic life Did things. Did you notice the difference? Were you like, I I guess I'm like a fuck up, but not about this? I noticed that I was very anxious about life responsibilities all the time. I was very anxious about, you know, uh, getting 
things done that I needed to for the management of my life. Yeah. But I didn't, and I, and I also was feeling co very confident in my workspace, which, uh, which again is, was not entirely earned, but it just was like this gut feeling. Um, and, and that discrepancy, I definitely noticed I was bothered by it. I was stressed out by it. And I think it did start to affect my work at a certain point. The sloppiness or the laziness of, in other areas. Well, yeah. Or just the, the difficulty, the sort of the, the anxiety in other areas. Yeah. And then, and that's when I think probably a couple of years into the daily shows, when I first started going to a therapist to like, what is going on? And I don't think I saw a great therapist for early on. Uh -huh. So it so was. That, yep. That's the, a uh, thing that not enough people understand yeah. and so i just was kind of spinning my wheels in that process and um but it was i i also think even a bad therapist is good is good for you it's better than nothing it's, yes. it's definitely better than nothing yes. because a bad therapist will st unless they're actually giving you bad advice or telling you bad things which they th this guy wasn't he yes. just was like a like kind of like a bump on a log so yes. but it does force you to just articulate your 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 fears and feelings and and like in in a way that really no other space mm -mm. kind of lets you do and and I just found tons of value in that like just talking out loud externalizing my fears or 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 frustrations or what have you that was, and it's why I tell, that's why I'm always an advocate for, for therapy. You're absolutely right. And that, that, uh, it's better than nothing. And it just use it as an opportunity. Don't even worry what they're going to say. Yeah. What do you, what's on your mind? Yeah. Don't worry about like their diagnosis. Just hear yourself. Yeah. Uh, try to understand yourself before they even get involved, by the way, which is what happens most of the time, even with a great therapist is you'll be like, Oh, Right. I see what I'm doing. Before they even Before say anything. Before they say anything. Yeah. Because another another set of ears, you'll be like, how is this sounding? Right. To anyone. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, you, it, I got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> it's so powerful to like, to just be forced to articulate what's going on in your body. Mm -hmm. Like you're, whatever you're feeling, just saying it. We, we so mm -hmm. rarely, even, even with the people very close to us in our lives, like it's very hard. We spend most of our time not saying what's going on. And in comedy, don't even think about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it is, it, you are instantly making yourself a target. The second you're like vulnerable about your yes. feelings yes. in the comedy space, right. like, oh my Although, God. And most is, good jokes are some breaking the thing of like, no, here's what's actually happening. Yeah, so I it, totally but in terms of, yes, uh, a, a certain, a certain standup special called blocks, uh -huh. for example, uh -huh. <laughs> something's wrong with me. But most of life is just going like, no, I'm great. And this is great. And yeah. This is everything's going to work out. Yeah. And, and, uh, and like making fun of your friends yeah, who, for like, who are, <laughs> who are being vulnerable. You're like, fuck out of here. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Tushy because it's time to give up wiping with toilet paper. We've stuck with toilet paper because it's familiar, but all it does is smear stuff and bacteria around leaving you feeling unclean and uncomfortable. Washing with a tushy bidet, you get a targeted stream of fresh water to get you two times cleaner than wiping ever could. It's time to retire that outdated routine and upgrade to a fresh, confident clean. Setup is easy, and the results, absolutely a game changer. Once you've experienced the tushy bidet, your butt will never settle for less. I mean, look, I've got, I've got the home tushy and the road tushy. Happily use my own promo code. As a matter of fact, the home tushy put it in myself works great. Just works great. Like it's got the knob, strength, direction, all that stuff. Now here's what surprised me: the road tushy. It doesn't look like much, but it it looks. I don't. I'm just gonna say it looks like a sippy cup. And then you two and you toot it, and it does everything you want it to do. That's all I'm gonna say. It works as well as the home tushy. 
Feel shower fresh when you need it most and join the 2 million butts who've already switched to Tushy. For a limited time, our listeners get 10% off their first bidet order when you use code NEAL at checkout. That's 10% off your first bidet order at Hello Tushy, H E L L O T U S H Y dot com with promo code NEAL. It's great. The home one's great and the road one's great. Hello Tushy. Dot com. Okay, so I'm curious as to now that you've got the diagnosis. So when you look, when you, the the effect it had on you is interesting. In that, did it get it gave you? Was it a bit of like a Kaiser Soze of like I knew it. You've Dude, known you've know known this whole fucking time, and that's why I did this, 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 mm-hmm. and this, and I'll stop beating myself up. Or was it? I got to, now that I know this, I can do this work and stop being how. Because. Yeah, great question. It's objectively working. Right. Who's mad? Your wife, your kids, (laughs) your parents, you? Yeah. Like, what's supposed to be happening that's not happening? I still attach a lot of shame to some of the shortcomings that I, that I experience. And I, and, and that is what I am hoping to detach from with more, more work in this area, because I still do struggle with some, with some of the things, uh, life responsibilities. And, um, and that is hard for, for the people that love me and I'm close to with this diagnosis. I, I would love to just sort of like step back, like you said, and be like, Oh, I'm actually like, Maybe I I should go easier on myself. I haven't quite gotten there yet. I haven't quite earned that yet. I do like have a lot of self love. I yep. like, I'm I'm not just like mired in yeah. self you know ridicule. But like there aren't places where you're like I shouldn't be here. Like you belong. You feel like you belong at in the ba- at the in the staircase at the Boston. Yeah, and at the Daily Show and. Oh no! I hangover I and... still have, I I definitely still have, uh, like imposter syndrome creeping in. I, that's another thing I've always struggled with is is sort of owning my success and feeling like like I I actually that confidence that I that I talk about early in my career. I weirdly it's the more success I got, the, I, it became more elusive. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Well, like it got pretty crazy. It did. You were on the Office Ensemble, and which I would say was like a probably a two degrees less severe than The Hangover in terms of like fucking energy. <laughs> was it easier to do it with people? Was it easier to like you could share the, the you could share the Hangover? with Bradley and, and oh, Zach for and sure. like, yeah. and not yeah, yeah, feel yeah. like it, it's all you. And, uh, totally. I, I think, um, and, and the office too was a sort of like, in, in all, every one of those moments, the daily show and the office yeah, and free. then the yeah. hangover, like they, I all, I, every single one had just w- amazing people, around me in the same boat and you're all contributing something different yeah do you know what i mean the hangover especially it's like you're all energetically the tension of the differences you can go you don't have to beat yourself up you could reduce it in a way i would bet and go like well i'm playing like an uptight guy right want like and i'm good at that and you could explain it away so that it wasn't like Am I Lawrence Olivier? Uh-huh. <laughs> Am I the greatest fucking actor? <laughs> like, but I'm sure it was a balance. Yeah, I think uh, I think that as as my sort of celebrity status increased, so did a lot of like I don't know, just expectations on me in ways that I didn't know how to navigate very easily. Can you tell me some? So I think uh, like I've always been intimidated by celebrities (laughs) and like, you know, 
so I, I get starstruck. Yeah. And so going to the, it's going to like X, Y, or Z dinner party or, uh, or Oscar party or whatever. Like I'm, I'm pretty anxious mm. and like, and, and that's, that's, uh, not always, but I think, um, and probably not, you are at times where you thought you wouldn't be and you're not nervous for people you thought you'd be scared of. Yeah. You don't know what's going to, it's a wild card every time. A little bit. Yeah. So like someone that I might be really excited to meet because I've admired them for a long time. Um, and there's one, one meeting in particular, I, I, I won't name them because I, <laughs> I just don't want to name check them in this context, but I, I met someone that I really, really admired and I, uh, and he and he c was so gracious. Came up to me uh, with a big handshake and was like, you know, tell like, how's it going? Tell me about yourself. How, like, I'm excited to meet you. And I was just like, I, I, I tongue tied and kind of like awkward. And I think he walked away kind of like, and I, I, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Who, who really knows? Uh -huh. But. Um, but the moment just sort of ended on a little bit of a, huh, okay, all right, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> and you know it's lost and you can't explain like, oh, I'm freaking out right now. Yeah. Yeah. And and I would say that's like probably at this point half the time. Like, I'm What was the imposter syndrome part? It's usually, it's almost never on a set. Like I, right. like when it comes down to like being in the creative process. Yeah. Uh, that is like a sweet spot for me and I love it and I I I I love to collaborate. And you can deliver. Like you don't you don't find yourself panicking in that situation. You know how to do it. Yeah. It's fun. It's so yeah. it's so it's a challenge, but it's like it's so so fun. Yeah. Um and it's also this sort of like childish fulfillment. Like it's what I always wanted to do. And so yeah. there's this like feeling of like of like when I'm on a set, especially if it's with people that I am excited to be with and and the material's good, uh, which I've been incredibly lucky to have a, a lot. Yeah. I I just am in no there's no better place. Like it is So with the the, the imposter the syndrome. The imposter syndrome is everything else. The imposter syndrome is like a red carpet or uh right. like like lots of kinds of press appearances. Um or uh or part or like parties yeah like you know and uh and and again it's not always but it does kind of creep in there and i have i think part of my one of my adhd symptoms or something sort of under that umbrella is that i am like appallingly bad i mean this is a this is a cliche but like people say like i'm bad with names but like no, no, no. I don't know anyone's names. Like I, I don't, I don't know anyone's names. So, and when you're famous, everyone knows yes. your name. So you and, go and they go, expect you to remember the time you met. They want to sure. re believe that you. They made an impression that you'll remember. Right. That well, that's one thing. But also, famous people reasonably expect you to know their names. But sure. I forget their names. <laughs> <laughs> I forget famous people. For the people I might be a fan of, I might have like like a, a brain fart, like in, and I just can't remember people's names. And so that's like, that makes moments. That Have makes you gone like, and this guy, I don't need to introduce. Yeah. Is there, there <laughs> there's are all, ways there's to cover so many for tricks. it. Like, you know, yeah. Like this Hulk guy. Hogan w w was famously bad with names and would just call everyone brother. <laughs> and like, okay, that works. Um, Fantastic. Brother. And you don't have that confidence of just being able to shake someone's hand and look them in the eye and like say, hey, George, how have you been? Yeah. When that, when, when you don't have access to that name, there's your overall, your overall confidence is like dramatically diminished in that moment. By 20%. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good number, I think. To, and it's sort of, there's a hangover from it because you're like, you, then you're like, then you start second guessing yourself. Like, wait, is that their name? I need that, that, um, that, uh, like Bill Clinton, like a president has I know. like a, a, an advanced guy yes. or whatever that just yes. stands there and is like, well, you know what I do on so set? And I don't know if I did it on the goods. I think I probably did it after everyone wears name tags. Yeah. In fact, I may have done on the goods because I remember somebody getting them. It started because someone got upset because I didn't remember their name. Yeah. Um, My mom's in a retirement community and everyone wears names tags and I'm 
just I just think it's the best. It is the best. It's By the, the way, best. anyone who's seen me do it has, has does it after at, on at work. If yeah. you direct anything, or even at the sh- even at the podcast in the office, be like, I d- I'm so bad with names. Yeah. Or you could just say you were diagnosed with face blindness at your at your big test. Yeah, well, your that's big the, cognitive I don't exam. have face blindness. I know you I, don't. I can. I know that I know someone. <laughs> that's like the. I yes. wish I had face blindness. I know because I wish I could just be like no idea. But I know I'm like I yes. know that person, and, I, and then you like, do this thing where you second guess: is it Maureen or Margaret? Oh God! And yeah. if it's on Maureen, and you assume it's yeah. It's just a, it is a bit of a nightmare, and I don't know if it's. Um, I think it. All of these are pretty much ADHD. Well, it's also it speaks to I have no chill. Yes, because because of these things like it is hard for me to feel chill does that mean you don't enjoy vacations you don't enjoy watching some a movie you don't what what is what is it when you say no chill what do you mean i mean that like like the 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 story i just told about meeting someone i was very excited to meet and always wanted to meet and then having no ability to actually deliver on my authentic self in that moment and that's so heartbreaking to me like i i am I mourn for those moments. Can I guess who it was based on your impression? Well, Tom sh- Hanks. No. <laughs> wasn't Tom Hanks. I thought it was Tom Hanks or Ron It, it wasn't Tom Hanks. And from now on, if you continue to ask me, I'll say I'll neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. Okay, fair enough. Um, but uh, so, yeah, like I, this could be a total projection, but I perceive you to be someone that like can somewhat effortlessly like just engage in chats with people that might have like much uh much higher or lower just a differential in status that is like that is not a, a hurdle for you but for some reason in i get in my head and i like those can be tough moments well and i know what you mean though in like the panic before a social situation. Yeah. Because I still have them and I have the name thing. And I always forget that I'm fairly decent at it. Yeah. And, and I, I probably get, am better than I think at it yeah. too. And I, 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 I think, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm also better than I was. Like yeah. I've definitely chilled out over time. It's funny. You, you were talking about like the, the sort of like, amped up characters that I played and in, in both on the office and in the goods and, and Stu in the hangover. Like I actually, I don't, I don't think I could play Andy at this point the same way. Like I would make different. It, it, Why? It, it's not it like all of that, like so much of the tension and I think anxiousness that I held in my body and, and my confusion about the world around me was was what i was kind of like uh purging through those characters like yeah like andy andy was so bad at social cues where are you going you want me to come with oh that was just like me on steroids like it was a sort of it was a way for me to kind of like i think laugh at and like externalize and laugh at so many of my own foibles and insecurities and i and and it's why also I tried to bring so much compassion to Andy because I, I, it was important to me to endow Andy with like an intrinsic sweetness or an in, intrinsic goodness because because I sort of want that to be true about myself. Do you find the aging, do you find uh, getting better at doing different kinds of parts? Other than just like you look older, or you look- Sure. I, I think my- um my my sort of interests have have evolved but and 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 they've they've kind of evolved with in in a way that i think is very organic for most actors it's just like as you age and your your life experience changes so like having a family is such a dramatic change now i've now played a dad a couple of times and i love it I loved like Rusty Griswold in mm-hmm. Vacation. It was like one of the most joyful uh, movie parts I've ever I'm had sure. the great luck to play. We're the Griswolds, you piece of ass. And then um, I, I just did this Jennifer Garner movie, Family Switch for Netflix, big Christmas movie. So fun, like just joyful yeah. parenthood comedy. I I would have 
definitely rolled my eyes at that 20 years ago. Uh, but I am, I, I'm thrilled by it now. It's, well, it's funny. And, and you have a history podcast. Do you know what I mean? Like this stuff where we all age and then right. you go, <laughs> if I heard that I, if I would, you would have written yourself off. Yes. Like, what are you, David Halberstam? Right. You're like a historian now. <laughs> but you, you, you age and go, yeah, I don't care about the shit I cared about. Yeah. I just don't, I can't convince myself. And I just have to admit, like, I have old taste. Exactly. <laughs> I play older, like, because yeah. I don't. I'm older. Yeah. You're I'm... never going to, in it's 15 years ago, you might have gone on a, on a bachelor trip to vegas yes and now you are never going to do that right unless it's with the cast of the hangover <laughs> for, <laughs> so, to, for for money. a second or third marriage yes for, for somebody <laughs> a, <laughs> for money um so i i'm forgiving you for for aging oh thank you um okay taking on too much well time blindness yeah yeah same yeah same in the same family yeah time blindness do you know what that is it, I can guess. You can guess. Yeah. Yes. Do you have no sense of how much time passes in during something? Yes, that that is correct. And I have I'm very bad at estimating durations whether in the past or in the future. So this this is so strange, but it wasn't until probably my 30s that I just started to clock like why don't I why can't I tell you dates from my past or my girlfriend the, cannot the, remember the, dates the way the way that all. the way that everyone Years i know can. she doesn't know yeah yeah so like i can tell you tons of events from my history i i have actually a pretty good narrative memory of my life um and if you give me a like a a cue for like a time or place like i can get there and remember so many vivid details but i cannot tell you the sequence that they happened in. I can't tell you what dates, like years or seasons or months. And for so many people, that is just totally effortless, effortless, right? Like my mom uh, just will just be like, um, you remember when you were here in June last year? And I can be like, what did we do? <laughs> Because that's going to make me remember. You like, seem familiar. Yeah, no, but like, what was the activity yeah. or what was the yes. place? Set, like, what was the reason for the visit? Because that's what I will remember. June, meaningless to me. Like, I don't, I cannot attach. Living in things. LA does not help that. <laughs> well, the total lack of seasons. Yeah, well, that's true. But I've always been, and that's one of the things I think. You know, I spoke to my sort of like generalized confusion about the systems of the world. Uh -huh. Time always confused me, like always uh, scared me even. Like, how do you know that? How do people know that? How can you place things? How can you schedule with confidence that far in the future? How can you know? You must have been scared a lot. I, th yeah, I think that's a, I think that's not an unfair Care. I mean, so it was, I call it anxious, but yeah, I think there but was like, kind of like, I don't know how to f not fend for myself in the wild, but it's like outside of the things you were good at, the things you could really focus on. You must've just been hoping for luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, think like, I, I think I there, hope because you, you do seem, you did always seem intelligent. And there is something about you that's absent-minded. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yes. it's, th that yes. is now that you're explaining it, I'm like, it makes sense to me. Yeah. You, the thing that you had in your ADHD diagnosis, I'm having where I'm like, oh, that's what you were experiencing uh -huh. is because you seem astute, aware, and partially absent. Yeah. I think, uh, <laughs> I think there's something to that um and f yeah i think fear is a is maybe feels like too strong of yeah, a word yeah. but but i but i actually think it it's uneasy it's, it's maybe a fair it's a fair word in, in certain contexts and certainly like going back to like early 
years, but I think, yeah. There's... You were thinking about stuff. I always thought you were thinking about stuff, Yeah, but it wasn't the thing I would have wanted you to be thinking about. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like okay. you were, th- you were engaged and you were thoughtful, but it wasn't about this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, you were, do you know what I mean? Are you talking about on set? No, the... I guess I'm talking, I'm talking, now I'm just thinking of you like generally, because I guess I've only dealt with you on set, but it was like, you were intelligent and engaged and. Yeah. Elsewhere. A little bit. Yeah, I, th- that's the part of me that's all just trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah, now I realize, like, because you're kind of like trying to scope it yeah. out, and and I I I have a reasonable amount of confidence in my general intelligence. Like yes, I, like I know a lot History about podcast, a lot of things. Like Number I, one, I care about yeah curiosity. I think curiosity is a, is a beautiful thing, and yeah. I, I explore my curiosity very often, and I love to go deep with people on on random topics yeah like it is just my favorite thing um and yet there are some other ways that i that i've always felt and this took this took years for me to start to piece together like again i don't think any of this really started to gel until my 30s or started to kind of like like it uh, it was just like um it was just a, a sort of like uh, simmering sense uh, that I w- that something was wrong or different, and so there was some there was some shame and fear mixed in 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 with all of that, and and it was really in my 30s that I started to actually like, okay, I'm no I'm noticing that time is a weird thing for me, like the way that I experience time is weird, and I yeah. would actually like start to keep track. Time is weird for me. What else is weird for me? Like, what else do I do a little bit differently, or think differently, or what? How? What other ways that peep that so many people behave and take certain behaviors for granted that are maybe very hard for me or or incomprehensible to me? Yeah, and uh, and that's what led me to this neuropsychiatrist. Eventually, was a feeling of like I I really want to do better. And really being in a want, relationship will yeah will bring and it having, into very having a, sharp relief. Having a family and like I don't even know the depth of all the things that I am struggling with here, and I just need and and you know I did go to therapy for many many years, and I and I had many therapists over the years, some good, some bad, and they were often very helpful with sort of like I don't know emotional. Uh, analysis and and kind of yeah. regulation and working through difficult feelings and and moments in my chapters of my life, but there still was this thing that I couldn't quite that just felt weird and different, and I and I and I didn't even start to I never even really brought that up consciously in what? therapy sessions until much more recently. Well, that you say that you're not face blind. You may be time blind, but I thought, I think Oliver Sacks wrote the, he wrote, I, I think it was a big, either a book or a New York article about being face blind. Sure. And. Prosopagnosia. Yes. And you know, you're, so you head into, con- it's what you are saying earlier, with just your confidence kind of hobbled because you're having a conversation and you're almost, it's almost like the movie Memento. Uh-huh. Where there's the <laughs> beginning of one of those scenes is like okay so what am i doing oh i'm chasing this guy no he's chasing me right <laughs> where you're just trying to gauge like what what's going on here a, a little and bit I, it's it's obviously not quite yeah that not dramatic. severe yeah but, um but something about where you're like where you did you find yourself because that one of the big autism questions is do you find yourself doing an impression of people not literally a vocal impression, but like, do you watch sitcoms or television shows to see how most people are behaving? And I've never had that. I like, I, and I don't think you do either, but I'm saying I, there are people that do that are watching it almost like come in. Right, right, you right. Go, hey, everybody. Yeah. And then you <laughs> Interesting. Shake a hand. And, and no. I don't think you're anywhere near no, that I, I severe, didn't, but I, I didn't, I didn't do that. But you know what I did do? <laughs> is I would watch 
I, I did that from a professional standpoint. I would watch actors and like analyze their performances. And to the Daily Show thing of like, yeah, yeah totally. John, thank you. I'm yeah. coming. Like right. knowing All how to do that. that. Uh, and even voiceovers, I would repeat voiceovers that I heard in commercials as just a study, as like a- I did a Samsung campaign and I was doing John Hamm. On the Samsung Galaxy S5. I was doing John Hamm- there you go. In BM, as doing his BMW. You know what we make. Basic, my version of that. S5. There's, we're all derivative. There's yes. nothing new under the sun. And like, it's just, uh, there's no shame in just owning. Yeah. And I'm sure Ham's doing somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ham's uh, doing you. Uh, what? This is a feedback <laughs> loop. <laughs> you guys. And I've noticed that you're starting to get high pitched. I, both I of know. You. It's I know. Very, very disconcerting. Um, yeah. So you found yourself. So you weren't like masking or impersonating but there was probably a bit of a like oh that thing with time and like okay everybody is seeing time yeah he's aware of how long that took yeah why okay keep an eye on that what was right. what would your marching orders be for yourself my coping mechanism oftentimes was just to focus on things that i was good at yeah so i would just focus on acting i would focus on on joke writing or yep. con whatever uh, or music is another big outlet for me. Yeah, you play um, banjo, right? You have to stop. Yeah, and guitar and uh, or, or you know certain certain social settings, being with certain people that like you know lift me up. Like I would just sort of like just chase the things that Felt gave good. me positive yeah. reinforcement. Um, that is not a long-term success strategy. Like you really do have to just deal with, with tough shit. And so, um, the, the, the answer is like, it's a, I'm still in that process. Like I'm still working on it. I'm, yeah. and I'm not altogether, like, I'm still scared trying to, trying to get to a, a more like effective place and a more effect, like a more effective version of myself, both as a as a spouse and a dad and and uh, and and a friend to so many people I care about, um, I'm working What's on the, it. Can, will, you, will you tell me the knock on you as a friend? Because um, are you doing it for? Are you are you doing it because you want to be more comfortable in your experience, or are you, do you feel like you're doing it because you're you you're disappointing people or you're not fitting in or is it just like no i would like to just be i would like this to be more pleasant <laughs> because that's been a big change for me it's like no i want to enjoy this yeah. more i think it's a lot of that but it's also in certain contexts wanting to show up better mm. and um and be a more you know a, address like certain responsibilities with uh with more efficiency and um and less like i don't know uh trepidation and and or you know like i said like uh gravitating towards positive situations experiences people like that leaves a lot of very important life <laughs> like not dealt with properly so it's a uh, you know what's funny at our age you can just maybe run the clock out <laughs> you're like how much longer ah, are we gonna be here i yeah. could i've the, i've never done the joke but it's like i could change but like it's yeah, almost well, over other right <laughs> that is you're right the, uh, what the, am i doing no but it is i it, it to your question i think it's a it is both it's like um i, I i'm starting to understand ways that that i could be better and i want to because i I still have for better or worse, like, like some amount of shame or, uh, or just frust frustration with myself. Some of which is probably irrational or not fair to myself, but I still feel it. And I still see the, my shortcomings and I just want to, I mean, I just, I, I want to give a, a, a real effort at being like, I, I just want to keep trying. Yeah, I will say like, in I, your I, defense, I, it I, I, we have a small window of knowing, but I'm saying it's never seemed selfish. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's you know how we have friends that have problems that keep benefiting them. Yeah, they 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 have ADD and it prevents them from asking you questions. 
<laughs> or you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm autistic, except when high status people are around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like we know 40 people like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've first of all, I've never thought of you as a flawed guy. And, but I will say it doesn't seem malevolent. You seem like a kind part. You've always, and in my experience are a kind person. So I would just say like, yeah, see if you can improve, but like, you're it doesn't seem to come from a bad place well i appreciate that yeah like it really doesn't see it doesn't i've never even subtly like helms a little like i've never you just seem like a nice guy and you're like great and funny and uh a show a showbiz contributor <laughs> like you're, <laughs> you're you're contributing a lot and like you just yeah if you have like pride i do the stuff that makes you feel shit like make yourself feel better because everybody else will feel better after that wait say that again meaning m do the stuff that if you want to if you want to improve as a person do it for your own yeah. i think i mean that's always my philosophy and i feel like it's a good parenting philosophy too yeah i do i, I also i think that you know why it's it's some old adage but like the best thing you can do for the people you love is to work on yourself. Yeah. And I really believe that. And I think, um, you know, you want to engage with the people you love and work on those dynamics always as well. Yeah. But, um, but it's not just that it's also us individually yeah. that, that have always have growth to do. And I, like, I'm very inspired by, um, by my mom, for example, who and that th this is kind of a corny example, but it, it's it just I think speaks to her sort of value system that she I gave her a ukulele for her birthday at uh, I think when she was seventy eight or eighty maybe, and she was just like I'm gonna learn this thing, and got after it, and just was like. This is, and she's, and she's like, I've always loved music. And I, this is it, it, just this way that maybe I can gr grow, keep yeah. growing. And, and she loves it. And she's not now she's like the go-to ukulele player for birthday sing-alongs at her <laughs> retirement yeah. community. They're like, Pam, get over here. We yeah. got another birthday. <laughs> and she, yeah. And she leads the, the birthday. It's like, it, it's just awesome. And I, I just feel like never never stop trying and and i don't know like i also feel this like humility is such an important uh, thing to bring to any process whether it's a relationship or a work environment or or self-improvement like that there's a point at which humility can turn into just like self-loathing or yeah. self-flagellation but yeah. um and, and and I think I've that's where I've struggled as I, as I mentioned earlier, just sort of like owning my success. I think like finding that line between humility and like genuine earned pride, yeah, and sort of like accepting my role as like a meaningful, like you were saying very generously, and I appreciate like uh, a a a serious contributor to this business yeah. that I love and that I've committed my life to, like. And I, and I sometimes forget that or I second guess it or, or I, I let my sort of, I don't know, like insecurity just sort of. Yeah. It's, there's also that. like pride cometh before the fall and all that stuff. Right. Of like <laughs> right. there's all the, the, the yeah. you know, phrases of like biblical punishment for pride and all this stuff. It's like, or I can just acknowledge what I am, not even like. What I am just like I don't know I fucking can fig I can be in a scene and make it funny and then I can do a talk show to promote it and I can do and and you can feel that way without being an asshole about it yeah and you don't have to go the other way of like but I also don't understand time yeah and I will never forgive myself <laughs> exactly. so you give yourself grace in both directions exactly um, yeah. Ed Helms thank you for doing the podcast and also thanks for not pronouncing uh, ukulele ukulele. Ukulele, unbearable. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Thank it was you, great buddy. to see you.